In this image in front of us, we've got some absolutely brilliant athletes. One of them, Steph Twell, is a friend of mine. Here's Steph. And believe it or not, Steph's actually retired now from her international athletics career, uh, represented Team GB twice in Olympics most recently uh, in 2020, uh, which was competing in 2021. Anyway, the whole COVID thing, of course. Steph, still a person I spend a bit of time with. I still do workouts with her occasionally in the gym, but this is the point I want to make to you. Occasionally, Steph would tell me that she would go up a mountain. And here's my mountain. I, as you know, I can't draw for toffee. Here's my mountain. Kind of made it like some kind of volcano. And here's that sort of snowy peaked mountain. There it is. And Steph would go up there, and here would be Steph on the side of this mountain, not to scale, as you can sure you can imagine. And Steph would be above this line here. Now that line, when we talk about altitude training, is above 2,500 meters above sea level. Okay, okay. So it's above, or well, greater than 2,500 meters above sea level. So Steph, for example, would go to the Pyrenees, and I believe from memory, the places that she would go would be place like Fon Romeo, which I believe were almost exactly 2,500, maybe 2,700 meters. High mountains, at least for European standards, and she would go there and she would compete. And sorry, I'll rephrase that. She would go there and she would train. And the, what we want to do here is investigate why she would go about doing that. Because the first and most sort of simplistic thing we can say about Steph and this practice, and of course it applies to every other athlete that does this, is that what we call the pressure of oxygen at that altitude is lower. Okay, so if we think about the partial pressure of oxygen at sea level, it's around about 20 to 21%, right? But at altitude, it's far, far lower. And that poses certain challenges to the athlete, which has positive impacts on adaptations. And these are amongst them. Because that part, that partial pressure of oxygen is lower, that means that Steph's or any other athlete's hemoglobin will not fully saturate. <laughs> I'm not sure what I've written there with... Um, with fully, but you get the idea, with O2. So in other words, at altitude, Steph's red blood cells will not be fully saturated with oxygen. And the impact of this, at altitude again, is that Steph would have a lower O2 carrying capacity. Now this poses problems. When she gets to altitude, it may well be that her performance suffers as a result of that, right? She has to kind of acclimatize. But the point we wanna make is all about the following. Because she's altitude, because she's training at altitude, this is what happens, the big picture. She experiences an increased production, or an increase in what, and I have to, always gotta be careful with this spelling, in erythropoietin. It's a really hard word to spell, there you go. Just check, just check how I've spelled that yourself, James. Okay, so basically, EPO, which of course you might know as, a, as an illegal substance that athletes, often cyclists, will take, this naturally occurring hormone will increase in production in the body as an adaptation to being in the altitude conditions. So, a couple of things I want to stress about this process. First of all, and by the way, the process is called erythropoiesis, if you want to make a note of that. But first of all, this is a natural hormone. Okay, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing this. And also be aware that the increased production of, of EPO um, through some like altitude training is nowhere near as great as the massive quantities that cheating athletes would take. So just be aware of that. But what does it do? It increases up arrow red blood cell production. So the bone marrow, it will go into overdrive those stem cells, releasing uh, that process of red blood cell production or, or um, erythropoiesis. And of course, that then is going to shortly increase the oxygen carrier capacity of the blood. This means that we get an increase in in hemoglobin levels. So we've now got more hemoglobin in the blood. We also experience what we describe as increased capillarization. So we literally grow more capillaries around the alveoli, around the muscle tissue, for example. And as a result of all of the points above, we get an increased oxygen carrying capacity. Well, we, Steph, is the person I'm talking about here, okay? So we get that, Steph gets that increased oxygen carrying capacity and delivery. Make sure that we include that notion here. And as a result of all of that, and this is really where I'm working towards here, as a result of all of that, this individual, Steph, can work at higher intensity aerobically. Now, I want to be clear here. She can do this when she comes back down to sea level and temporarily, because that leads me nicely into 
a couple of other points. In fact, before I get onto those sort of negatives, just let me add a couple of further things. This means that we delay Obla, or Steph delays Obla, so she reaches Obla later when she comes back to altitude, and she also experiences quicker recovery. So once she's back at altitude, she will experience quicker recovery, and we can also say she gets quicker buffering. Now, if you're not sure what buffering is, this is the process of the bicarbonate ion, which is actually removing um, lactic acid during exercise, not just when we're recovering. So that's all the positive. But the problem we've got is there are a bunch of negatives. There are a bunch of negatives about this. And obviously, already you can bear in mind that an athlete would go up and go up to altitude some weeks before their big competition. They'd come back down to sea level shortly before the big competition. And of course, the benefits would be there and then. Uh, available to them during the competition but there are negatives first of all the individual has to go through what we call the acclimatization process acclimatization so they have to get up to altitude it may well be that they experience a loss of performance so when they first get there their actual aerobic performance steps aerobic performance may well suffer because of course they've got less that those adaptations haven't ha happened yet and they're in sort of worse exercising conditions they might experience altitude sickness. Now, it doesn't tend to happen at 2,500 meters. It tends to be a bit higher than that, but some people will. We can actually call this, if you want to use this term, hypoxia. It's a nice phrase to use in place. It's synonymous with altitude. It is altitude sickness. The other negative about this are that when the person comes back down, so if comes back down to the UK, for example, lives in the south of England, the benefits are lost quickly. Okay, so, and let me, let me stress, at sea level. So once she's back down, Whatever benefits she's derived will be limited. The other things, just on a practical level, the person might be homesick. This makes me think of people like Mo Farah, who spent months and months and months away from his UK-based family to go and train up from memory, I believe it was in the US and Colorado, and they'd also go to Kenya. And the other thing is that the body produces limited EPO, and that's the point I wanted to make earlier. Body produces limited EPO. So the point I want to make there, not that we would in any way encourage somebody to use EPO as an illegal substance, of course, but the point we want to make here is that the EPO that the body will produce naturally is nowhere near the quantities that, let's say, those road cyclists in the 2000s and 90s were taking to boost their performance. It was far, it is far greater. So this is has a more limited impact than that, albeit cheating. This, of course, is perfectly legal. Let me put that in here. This is, of course, perfectly legal. It's also exclusive. So this isn't something that amateur athletes like me are going to go and take part in. This is something that high-end Olympic athletes are going to do because it benefits their high-end performance. Finally, I just want to encourage you, go and look Steph up online. Absolutely awesome person. Uh, had an awesome career for Team GB. A uh, friend of mine, friend of uh, the Ever Learner. And uh, Steph, I look forward to seeing you down the gym in the coming days. Cheers.